Hello everyone, welcome back to Chaplin J TV. Today I am uh, going to deliver a sermon in English for the first time. Yay! Uh, this sermon uh, is based on my uh, personal experience and also someone's uh, personal spiritual uh, experience. Um, I hope uh, this story uh, will be helpful for those who are uh, suffering in the midst of uh, darkness. See you soon. All right, now I'm uh, in my studio. To be honest, uh, this is my room. Uh, maybe someday uh, I will have a uh, classic and, and uh, uh, official uh, Chef and Jack TV studio. That's one of my uh, wishes. All right, I will uh, read uh, two verses from the uh, book of Habakkuk. Uh, chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Though the fig tree does not blossom, and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails, and the fields yields no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold, and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, and I will exalt in my God of salvation. Amen. These verses are uh, one of my uh, favorite uh, Bible verses. Uh, it shows us a very, very faithful uh, attitude towards God. But I felt uh, one day, um, how come is it possible? Uh, how is it possible without uh, necessity, the necessity of our life, you know, food, job, or some money? Without that, how come is it possible for us to uh, rejoice and exalt? In other words, how come... Uh, can we praise God in the midst of suffering? It is very, very hard to do that. Um, I'm so afraid of uh, someone who uh, interpret this verse, oh, you should rejoice in the midst of suffering if you believe in God. If you truly believe in God, you should rejoice in the midst of suffering. Um, I don't think it's, uh, that's not right message that really uh, meant to us. That's why we need uh, some uh, context uh, in order to understand this text. This text uh, comes from uh, the prophet Habakkuk's uh, prayer um, right after he experienced uh, the presence of God, uh, very grand and huge uh, uh, presence of God. He received his uh, message, God's message, and also God's answer uh, about the question uh, the uh, Habakkuk uh, struggled with. So after that, he realized, oh my goodness, I was wrong, but God is right. Then he praised God and he confessed his uh, faith in God. So please don't uh, try to uh, hard on yourself. Okay, uh, I'm going to be uh, having a those kind of faith um, so that I can uh, continue to believe in God in the midst of sufferings. Oh, that's a good one. 
but uh, this text is mean, means uh, not that kind of things. That's my interpretation. So whenever you uh, feel in the midst of nowhere and in the midst of, uh, you know, suffering, you feel uh, there is no God. Then you feel, right? Totally fine. Totally fine. And then and I just recommend that uh, uh, in those times, just ask to God and even appeal to God. How dare you, God? Totally fine, as as Mr. Habaku did uh, in his days. But important thing is, you need to be patient until to get the uh, God's answer. There is no uh, clue or reason in the book of Habakkuk how long, how long uh, did it take uh, to get the message or answer uh, from God. But sometimes, you know, it's a year long, sometimes uh, it's lifelong. That's what we uh, know from the Bible and from our uh, daily life. But I really want to share um, the message from God, even though uh, God's answer seems to be delayed or seems to be uh, very slow, it will come for sure. That's God said to Habakkuk. I will read it for you, that verse is, God said, There is a still vision for the appointed time, the speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It is surely come, it will not delay. I think it's time to share my personal experience uh, about the God's answer and the God's uh, silence. Uh, yeah, I believe in God and God, uh, if God uh, promises and then the promise will uh, come and the due date is come, surely. But it's very hard to wait, right? That's true. Um, from my personal experience during the COVID-19, over two years, I took care of uh, COVID-19 patients in the uh, MICU, it's Medical Intensive Care Unit uh, at the uh, University Hospital uh, here in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, I remember that uh, December 2020 and January 2021 and until uh, March, we had lots of lots of patients in, in our uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, unit who are uh, severely ill uh, due to the viruses. You know, my job is uh, comfort, to comfort uh, patient, family, and, and our staff in those time of uh, crisis. So I was working as a one of uh, care team uh, in the COVID unit. We try to comfort uh, COVID patient's family because family is not allowed it to visit. So we using Zoom or um, uh, whatever uh, technology uh, try to uh, let uh, patients to see and, and contact uh, with on, on their family. Sometimes we pray together through the through the Zoom, um, and 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 also the people share their love and gratitude uh, through the uh, technology. But those days um, in 2021, the surge of COVID-19 uh, here in the uh, Midwest 
like uh, the New York and the Seattle. Um, so the people die every day uh, in the COVID unit. Um, most of them are uh, at the age of over uh, 65. But one day, one of our attending doctor told me that uh, I'm not going to do that anymore because, you know, my job is uh, not let people die. You know, his job is fixing and cure the people who are suffering from their illness. I totally understood and I heard that his uh, spiritual and emotional uh, uh, fatigue. I was filled that way. I, I, I also was exhausted and tired about the situation. It's kind of a traumatic uh, experience for all who are working with the uh, uh, COVID unit. But at the time, I prayed a lot in order to uh, protect myself uh, and, and keep, keep moving myself, to, uh, proceeding uh, towards not just the stuck uh, in the sadness or uh, kind of symptom of depression. Uh, sometimes I prayed, uh, uh, you know, some of the patients uh, really ha having a hard time and let him, let them know God's presence. And, and I really want to uh, let God uh, change this uh, situation. But the reality is not uh, easy. I prayed, uh, people die. I prayed and people die. And don't get me wrong, uh, my prayer uh, should be answered and, and, and revived everyone. No, I didn't mean it. Um, but my psychological reality is getting worse and worse. Very tired and very sad, you know, because people die every day. So it's very, very, very hard to accept the reality at the time. Um, so I felt like, oh, where is a God? I knew God is with us, Emmanuel God, through my brain. But I didn't felt God's presence at the time. But luckily, Currently, I experienced, uh, I, I think I had an answer uh, from God. You know, I believe God working through people, right? So I really want to introduce uh, uh, one of my messenger of God, <laughs> Steve Rogers. Uh, no, it's not Captain America. <laughs> uh, his name is Steve Rogers. So um, he is one of uh, our patient COVID-19 uh, unit. He came in uh, mid-March, mid my colleague Chaplin and I just helping him to communicate with their family uh, kind of uh, almost every day. Uh, we just set up the Zoom and, and the family can see him and pray. And we, we had a, a wonderful a time, uh, you know, bring the presence of God uh, through the technology and through the God's, uh, through, the, through the family's love. And also, um, uh, I, I realized that uh, even though uh, there are so many uh, sad things happen, we can... Uh, find out the glimpse of hope. So the, the Steve Rogers, uh, after the uh, treatment, and he finally survived, and he uh, showed up uh, early this May, uh, one of our uh, leadership treat, and he invited the people who uh, took care of him, and he shared uh, what he experienced. Uh, during the COVID and uh, during his hospitalization. That was a really, really wonderful uh, moment that I felt the presence of God and that I felt uh, uh, the, finally God answered to me 
Um, and, and I feel like this is it. This is it. So the first of all, he just tes testified uh, very beautiful uh, words in front of our uh, leadership, and, uh, our uh, uh, staff in the hospital in that meeting. I remember one thing, he survived after that and he uh, was able to uh, show up, up uh, in the wedding of, in the wedding ceremony uh, of his uh, grand, granddaughters. Uh, that was a fabulous uh, story. And also, um, he testified two things. First of all, you know, he realized in the God's presence through people uh, other, uh, all the hospital staff, but especially uh, through through our chaplains. Um, so that is a wonderful story that I really want to share with you. Um, and my family was on Zoom, and we had like twelve people that were all little little pictures on the TV screen. They were all praying, and we were praying. Pastor was there, and uh, I do remember. I don't know if it was at the end or what what started it, but. Um, Pastor laid hands on me, and I was with COVID, and he laid hands on me, and I remember put his hands on my chest, my, my stomach, and, and praying, and I remember and what, yeah, calling the name of Jesus, and uh, there's no doubt in my mind that you know, the Spirit was there, and, that, and that's, you know, like I said, God is the one that controls it all, but he uses people to, to participate sure, in his kingdom, sure. so uh, it was just, a, you know, I'll never forget that, that was just an amazing thing. And also... He testified what he had experienced uh, during the uh, hospitalization. Uh, he experienced impressive uh, spiritual experience. And he heard a voice in his uh, kind of struggling, in his uh, personal struggling. Okay, well, when I was under sedation for COVID, I, um, I didn't know what was going on around me. And uh, I had a spiritual experience under there. Um, I interpreted it as, as there were, it was demons that were threatening and challenging me. Um, they were telling me that my wife had left me, that my friends were all gone and dead, that my grandkids were dead, that they were being hunted. And these, what I thought were demons, um, were just trying to torture me. And so it seemed like it went on for days and days. And I, you know, I was crying and I remember, you know, it was just agonizing. It was terrible being under, it was terrible. And then all of a sudden, and I don't know where it was in the timeline of where I was in the hospital or being under, but somewhere along the line, Jesus shows up. Didn't see his face, but I saw him from behind. And people ask me, how do you know it was Jesus? Okay. And I go back to the scriptures when, when John the Baptist was still inside his mom and Jesus was inside his mom. John the Baptist jumped. He knew, he knew that there was Jesus. He knew that was the Savior and the Messiah. There was just an, I knew when he showed up spiritually or whatever, I knew that this was Jesus. And there was a light in front of him. It shone from him. It illuminated a little bit of area. I never saw the bad guys, never saw anything. It was all black, except the figure who was Jesus from behind. And so I knew immediately it was him. I looked at him and I said, um, I'm ready to go, Lord. Take me, I'm ready to go, take me with you. I was at peace, I was, I'm calm, ready to go. You know, my savior is there. And so he, he utters these words to me. He says, rest in my presence. Rest in my presence. Yeah, I was like, don't talk. Boom, immediately <laughs> the temptations, the torture, everything stopped. And he was gone. And he said, just rest in my presence. And so it was it was done, it was over. So I don't know how long it was before I came out or whatever, but the bad guys had left, you know, they had fled. They had fled. What a wonderful story. Um, I, I really uh, want you to know uh, God's works is mysterious. Usually, God working through uh, God's people, you and me, right? So, if you have a uh, experience God's presence, then what would you do? Sure, exactly. 
uh, we can uh, choose joy uh, in our daily life. Exactly the Habaku uh, did. So I really want to recommend, you know, anyone uh, watch this video, you will experience uh, the presence of God. So please, please accept it. And if you believe in that God is working through, uh, through me and through Steve Rogers, then what would you do? Right, right. Choose joy in each of your daily life. But don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say, uh, you know, you, you should choose joy in the midst of suffering, in the midst of uh, uh, crisis. That's not the message, you know. That's insane. Um, if you are in the midst of sadness and sorrow and crisis, please process your emotion first. Okay? And after that, don't, don't, don't be uh, stuck in your sadness and sorrow. Just come back. Uh, to the Word of God, okay? And you just read the Bibles and uh, Word of God, you know, encourage you. I know your sadness. I know your uh, a sense of uh, hardship. But here, here is a glimpse of hope, okay? If you process your own emotions and then come back to uh, God's promise, all right, so um, um, the God's promise is like this: I promise you, I I give you, I give you a uh, a comfort, um, I give you comfort. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Right, but God already gave us uh, uh, His promise, God's promise through Book of Habakkuk and and and, and Book of Bible. So. Uh, after you process your own emotions and come back to a word of God so that God will protect your heart and your mind. So, then, what would you do as a believer waiting for, waiting for God's due date, God's answer? That's why I said, choose joy like Habakkuk uh, uh, confessed, I will rejoice. I will. That's in, a, in, a, in other worlds, you know, that's a choice. That's our choice. I will choose joy and I will choose, you know, praise God in the midst of uh, suffering. That's exactly the Mr. Habakkuk. The prophet Habakkuk said, and also the uh, disciple Paul taught the people, the believers, right? Chapter 4 and verse 4, he said, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you uh, for this time. Thank you for your words through uh, Prophet Habakkuk and also uh, thank you for your uh, grace through our uh, personal experience and through our, uh, the retired pastor, the COVID-19 survivor, Steve Rogers. We thank you for this moment uh, that I pray that uh, anyone who watched this video hears the same way and, and, and feels the same way, let them experience your presence through this video and through these uh, testimonies. And also uh, let us uh, choose joy in each every day because of, because of your promise and because of our uh, faith in you, Lord. In your holy name, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen.